Located just 18 miles north of St. George off I-15 in southern Utah is the small community of Leeds. Most people just pass right by Leeds and uh, we don't we don't have a whole lot of traffic coming up and down our main street and we kind of like it that way. Our roads aren't really built for that uh, but we do have a lot of tourist traffic that happens up at the museum that you got to see. This small community is also known for its proximity during the silver mining days and travel out west. So this was I-15, you know, essentially. This was the main route getting to California. I-15 came in, took up some property there, moved all the traffic over to there, and we don't really get a whole lot of people that come through town. Uh, it's more destination. After the price of silver plummeted in the 1900s, Silver Reef died. However, the farming community of Leeds continued to survive. The town's bishop, Benjamin Stringham, requested that the town be named Leeds after Leeds, England, where he had served as a Mormon missionary. So by May of 1869, Bennington became Leeds. Much of Leeds' quiet Main Street houses a number of historic buildings dating back from the 1800s. We've got a, a group of citizens in our town that have been here since Southern Utah was established. And um, we, we've got the Sullivans and the Savages, and we've got people who were down here through their generations and have retained uh, their, their properties. And they really, really care about their name. They really care about keeping the community, being a part of keeping the community uh, wholesome and, and beautiful and, and pleasant to be in. And they're also very concerned about retaining the history. And they'll bring in historical documents to me that we can register with the state and, and retaining that, that historical element throughout southern Utah, not just in Leeds. And those things are really unique here. The old schoolhouse was moved and later became Town Hall. Inside, the new mayor has been getting used to the old filing system still used to keep track of the city's meetings, master plans, annexations, and resolutions. Okay, um, but in regards to the resolution, it's amending 1977. Here you go. His only assistant keeps this system up to date, and she knows just where to find everything. This is the Leeds Town Ledger. Okay. And this was this was how they did it. When people bought their plots. In the this was in 1990. Leeds is also unique in that it has its own private water department that is run by volunteers. Again, they're they're, they're citizens of the town who step up to try and take care of the town um, on their own time and making sure that we have enough water and that the infrastructure is solid should a earthquake come or any of those things, but. They, we do the best we can with what we have, and so far it's been, it's been okay. But agriculture still remains the biggest staple for this community. Yeah, agriculture has been a big part of Leeds for many years, and uh, we hope to keep that component here. As you know, farms do kind of go from generation to generation, and sometimes the next generation doesn't want to keep it a farm, and uh, so we may face some of that in the near future. But our hope is is that they will, uh, and that we'll be able to retain parts of this town as agriculture and farming communities and enabling that self-sustaining community. With one of the longest growing seasons in Utah, the town of Leeds is making way for grapes. At an altitude of around 3,800 feet, Leeds is about 10 degrees cooler in the summer than St. George. It's the perfect growing weather for grapes that don't require much water. I'm not really versed on how and why grapes grow where they grow, but we're really warm here and we are also dry. And I think those two combinations bring in uh, a fruitful uh, bounty of grapes. Those with grape vineyards are looking to eventually put in wineries using those crops. With less than a dozen small businesses, Leeds Mayor is hoping to expand with the growth in Washington well, County. We are seeing a lot of growth and we are seeing uh, a lot of developers come in and want to expand uh, development, especially within the boundaries of Leeds. We're a little bit cooler, we've got a little nicer uh, uh, background, and it's, it's something that we're trying to carefully manage uh, so that the property owners can exercise their rights, and those who exist here are able to exercise their rights and not have their property values diminished. 
And one of the greatest benefits for the people who live here is the lack of people. We've got no traffic jams. We don't even have a street light in Leeds. It's a really great place. Um, most people know their neighbors and they're happy to know their neighbors. And for many, this may be just a quick stop on the way to Zion. So we get a lot of traffic that is the overflow from Zion's. And as we've talked to a lot of the, uh, the visitors who've come through, they see the long line at Zion, look for uh, other alternates through the internet, and, and end up landing in Leeds. And they, they love it. They go to our museums, they go shop at our local uh, restaurants and shops, and, and, and really enjoy the small town feel that Leeds has. And that's what we want to keep, even though development's going to come. We want to retain that, and we're going we're gonna to find ways to do that. And while there aren't a lot of jobs here today, back in the day, this was a huge project to keep men employed. CCC camps in the 1930s helped men who were without jobs during the Great Depression. Remnants of the old cabins they built and stayed in while working on projects in the area can still be seen in the town, along with other historical markers of what went on in the past. For many, this is the reason they come here, as well as stay here. And we got the museum, we've got some restaurants that, uh, that draw some people in, a lot of recreation with the ATVs, but that's about it. Leeds is working on a new website in hopes of attracting more of what they'd like to see in their community. In Washington County, Melissa Anderson Community Education News.